Right. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the OCB 2016 Summit here in San Jose. Uh, my name is uh, Kumar Shankaran, and uh, I'm the Associate Vice President of Software and Platform Engineering at Applied Micro. So for people who don't know Applied Micro, we have been in the business since 1978. We are a public company. The ticker symbol is AMCC. In the business since 1978, uh, traditionally what's called a telecommunication framer mapper company. And then towards the end of the 90s, we moved into processors. We started doing processors with the power PC business. So back in 2003 or 2004, we acquired the 405 IBM power PC business. So now we own that. And then moving forward, we started a uh, few, few years down the line, we started moving to ARM. So moving on, just to give you a brief history of where things are with Xgene. So Xgene is the uh, ARM 64-bit product from Applied Micro and give you a quick history of where things are. So back in 2009, we had a dedicated processor team that started the 64-bit development of the ARM processor itself. And then in 2010, we had the first ARM, world's first server architecture license. So that's a nice license that you get from ARM itself to build your own CPU. For fast forward a little bit, we had uh, an FPGA-based design that we uh, give, gave out to a lot of partners to you know, develop software, operating systems, and such back in April of 2012. And then the first silicon sample, which was Xgene 1, the first version, was in March of 2013. In uh, October of 2014 was the first production. So this is the first production uh, version of uh, hardware that we had from HP, which was called the M400. So that's part of the Moonshot product from HP. So that was launched in October of 2014. Since then, have been in production. We also got the best product as part of the ARM TechCon show in 2014 for our second generation, which was Xgene 2. So Xgene 1 was the first generation, and Xgene 2 was the second generation product. And uh, in spring of 2014, we started sampling Xgene 2 to initial customers, and then we have since, since been sampling that very close to production at this point in time. And the, the big milestone was late in 2015, we announced Xgene 3, which is a third generation. And I'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the presentation. But we, uh, we announced Xgene 3 and also announced what's called Extend, which was a, a coherent fabric that is used for connecting multiple Xgene devices to each other. So this is the announcements we made back in the ARM TechCon in 2015. So that's kind of where we are at this point in time. And in terms of market segments, the target customer types are mainly OEMs, ODMs, uh, networking, hyperscale, HPC guys, primary market segments for us. And on uh, the target deployments, main, mainly mainstream web tier, search, memcached, storage, and enterprise. Right? These are the large market segments we cater to from an Xgene product portfolio. So moving forward, what we're announcing today in this show here at the OCP is this platform here, which is an OCP compliant platform using our second generation device, which is Xgene 2. So, as you can see in the picture, you can come over to our booth, you can see a real live demonstration of software and the hardware itself. You can get a good look and feel for this product. So it's a four Xgene 2 based platform. So there are four Xgene 2 CPUs up to 2.4 gigahertz. As you can see in this picture here, there are uh, two large heat sinks and below each of these heat sinks is two Xgene 2 devices. So there are four devices in a half width OCP form factor sled. So it's half width, one new form factor, can have up to four storage disks. Um, integrated 16 port 10 GB switch. There is a four 10 G uh, ports to the top of rack switch at the back plane. Can address up to 256 gigabyte of memory. Supports IPMI 2.0 based node management using an integrated BMC. And at the same time, this is the first time we are introducing open DCRE. So this is a very, very important feature that we see in effectively replacing an entire BMC from the design. And you can still manage the entire server using what's called open DCRE. So you can see a live demonstration of this if you come out to our booth. 222 watt of uh, sled power. And then uh, basically supporting both scale out and what's called scale up using Xtend. So if you have a scale out deployment, you can have the same hardware platform. If you have a scale up, we use Xtend on the same hardware platform to give you a coherent image that will let you uh, scale up the entire design for a larger core count and a single operating system image. So this is the picture of the board that I have. Uh, the real board is there in our, uh, in our booth. Now in terms of what we are bringing, why is this important? So here is a value proposition using this Xgene 2 platform. In a, a typical in-memory database workload like MongoDB. So MongoDB is an in-memory workload. 
um, the entire database effectively runs out of memory. So if you compare the performance of this platform that you just saw, which is Xgene 2 based, and then an incumbent, in terms of performance per watt and uh, the performance per dollar, which are two important parameters for a TCO, here is what we have. So on the left side chart, you can kind of see the dark green is the performance, and the light green bar is the power. Right? So you can kind of see on the power side, we are kind of roughly equal. And there are literally about 4x the compute performance right, at the same rack power. So that's the message we are bringing. 4x the compute performance at the same power. And there's 4x performance per watt, which is what you see on the right side chart here. And then literally 5x in terms of performance per dollar. So this is using a, an existing platform, using an incumbent that we have today in a similar form factor, which is an OCT one-third width rack or a one-third width sled. Okay, so moving on, this is the other platform we are introducing today, which is the pro produced by this Pi1 company called Vistron. So this is called X5, and it's an OCP compliant multi-server. What that means by multi-server is it can either be used as a compute platform or it can be used as a storage platform pretty much at the same time. So there are four configurable sleds here. You can pull out each of these sleds, and uh, each of these sleds can either be a compute tray or a storage tray. And on the compute tray, we have eight APM XGene 1, which is a first generation silicon, for, which is an ARM 64-bit compute node. And each compute node has eight DIMMs up to 128 gigabyte of uh, M.2 SSD for storage, mainly for booting, operating systems, logging, and such. And there are two QSFP plus 10 GB connectors to go to the back pane and for network connectivity. And on the storage tray, it uh, has one single compute node, which is still based on our first generation Xgene 1 silicon, and uh, a Marvel storage controller, and ASP 1250 BMC, which is for management again, and uh, up to 10 3 terabyte, 3 and a half inch standard uh, hard drive that you can buy. Or you can even have 16 SSDs in one single tray. And, uh, there's one SFP plus 10 GB connector on the back for network connectivity. In terms of software, supports both Ubuntu, open source Linux at this point in time, fully customizable, all source code available, GPL v2 license. And on the power supply, it supports a 3 plus 1 redundant power supply, right? So as a complete redundant power supply with a maximum power of about 4.8 kilowatts or 4,800 watts. So this is the other platform we are announcing today. Again, you can see a live demonstration of this. We are running Ceph on this. You can see the live demonstration in our, in our booth. Now, in terms of software stack of what we are running on this uh, Vistron platform, here is the software stack. As I mentioned, we are running Ceph. And uh, so from going from bottom to top, the bottom is the hardware itself. And we are running Ubuntu as an operating system on this machine. And uh, then on the left side, you see the stack uh, of, for Ceph. And on the right side, you see the Calamari management. So there is a management GUI that's Calamari based. And uh, we have an Apache web server running. And uh, there's a diamond engine which collects stats and then reports it to the GUI. And the salt stack also participates in the reporting of the, the information that is provided by the system. SSH and NTP for synchronizing time and logging in. And on the Ceph cluster, there are, there are literally about 10 different uh, engines of Ceph running on each of the hard drives. And uh, there is an uh, OCD daemon and RADOS. So RADOS runs on top of Ceph and collects all this information and presents it to the user. So it's one single software stack, pretty, pretty co custom production software in terms of Ubuntu. And uh, to be deployed, it's fully ready for deployment at this point in time. Uh, moving forward, so I wanted to talk about some of the production systems we have with Xgene. So since we have been working with Xgene for the, since 2009, as I mentioned before, there are several production systems. So these are just some of them. I'll quickly address each of this. The HP ProLiant M400 is the moonshot system, which was launched by HP back in 2014. Then in the middle is a gigabyte system, which is called NP30, still based on the Xgene 1 production device. So it's a standard 1U-based motherboard that's offered by gigabyte. And then uh, the next one you, you are seeing here is a storage optimized solution based on Xgene 1. So it's offered by MyTag. And that platform will be going production in the middle of this year. So we call that platform Mudan. So it stands for a flower in Taiwanese. And this will be launched uh, by us in the middle of this year. Um, in the middle tier, Cirrascale, the RM20, 2916 is a HPC product. So there are two uh, K40, NVIDIA K40 
and going forward it'll have KAD GP GPU cards in a single one U form factor with X gene one. The middle is the same system that I just mentioned about the Vistron X5 OCP platform, the one we just launched today. And uh, on the right is a platform from E4. So E4 is a high performance computing company based in Europe. So this is another HPC based solution targeted mainly for the EU market, the European market. And down, we announced this last week. It's a Contron is a company again based in Europe. So this is an NFV based custom solution developed by Contron and uh, based on XGene 1 again. So it's a dual node single platform solution based on XGene 1. Eurotech, it, this is a liquid cool system for high, high density compute and HPC again. This was announced by them at the um, supercomputing event in November last year. And then lastly, Griffin. This is the same platform that you saw based on OCP. So this is, will be going production the middle of this year again. And uh, this will be supported by some of the ODMs based in Taiwan. And this is the same board that you saw on the OCP form factor is repurposed in a one U rack form, form factor, which is a classic traditional 19 inch rack solution. So these are the systems that we have today going for developed by some of our OEM and ODM partners. So lastly, where are, where are we heading now, right? So what, what's next? So some of the questions that we always get asked is, okay, guys, what's next? We have seen XGene 1, we have seen XGene 2. What's next? So here is what's next. And uh, we announced XGene 3 at the ARM TechCon. And uh, this, we expect, will be changing the quantum of the way ARM servers are positioned itself. And it's like a quantum step up from where we are today. So we mentioned some of the features that XGene 3 will have. And uh, from a summary perspective, it's like 6x the performance versus our current generation product family, like both XGene 1 and XGene 2. 6x the performance. One terabyte per socket. So we have eight DDR channels going DDR4 up to 2667 in XGene 3. One of the key differentiation factors. So about one terabyte per socket, very important for large memory and uh, large memory requirements in memory databases, right? So they need a very large memory footprint per socket, which this part addresses. And uh, yeah. And last but not the least, the power, right? The power is uh, thir very lean and mean. So we always try to keep the power very lean and mean for all XGene products. So 30% lesser power compared to what the, the competition is, right? That's what we're bringing to the table. So overall, XGene 3, as we mentioned, it's going to be a 32 core device going up to 3 gigahertz, 8 DDR channels, DDR4, 2667. There are lots of PCIe, 42 PCIe Gen 3 lanes for connectivity, expansion, networking, HBA, storage, and, uh, and then at the, at the power, 30% lesser power per, per at, the, at the rack level. So we expect this to be a good leap going forward in all the data center applications. So that's pretty much all I all have for today. Thank you for attending. And uh, we, as I mentioned, our booth is C11. Please do stop by. We can dive a lot more details into each of the systems we talked about. And any questions you, can, you have, I can answer over there. Thank you. <laughs>